The key concern we find is in the project appraisal document which we requested for at the, at the, at the meeting. We noticed that six million of that money has already been spent and it was spent to prepare this particular project. So the cost of putting this project together initially is about $6 million which they intend to recoup from the $250 million. So what is available at this point in time is $244 million. But we also notice that a lot of the monies are going into consultancies. You will notice from the attack table that they will tell you who's non-consulting services, consultant services of part one, two, and three amount to a total of about $104 million. Mr. Speaker, that is a problem for us because you cannot have a project where a lot of it is going to consultancy and not going into the specific solution to the problem. And we would wish that this House approve this loan subject to some amendment to the disbursement formula for the loans as they have been allocated to the various projects. Mr. Speaker, with this few words, I would like to support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am very concerned about an item on this loan. Mr. Speaker, if you find the attachment 8 and 9, I will need explanation because it reads as consultancy. As a speaker, if I put the two together, it's giving us 94.8 million US dollars. The speaker, you take 250 million and then about 94.8 90, is going for consultancy. The speaker, they should explain this properly. Because the speaker, I want to beg this out. The speaker, it is good that ECG be supported to carry out its core functions. Yes, it is true that we have a lot of challenges and we need to be able to improve it. But Mr. Speaker, if we have to take 250 and about 90 million of it should be consultancy, please, we need to reject this one. We don't need it. Because it is going to impoverish us. Because this is money that we will pay. Even though it has no we will pay the money. If about 94.8 million is going to be used for consultancy, Mr. Speaker, um, I want to believe that maybe the members of the committee have more details about this than what we, we are seeing. Because, Mr. Speaker, honestly speaking, I don't even understand why this part of this money is not going to empower some of our uh, universities, like uh, the electrical department of KNUSD, the other universities, to be able to produce our own meters. And this money that we are talking about consultancy, Mr. Speaker, I want to believe that half of it will get our, our, our tertiary institutions, especially those that are doing the technical, uh, uh, the technical university, to want to produce our own meters. Mr. Speaker, let them give us more details about this. I want to beg that we stand this thing down. Let's get these details. Let's get the details. But to dedicate 94.8 million out of 250, why? You are giving us the money with one right hand and taking it with your left hand. Mr. Speaker, that is too much. So they should provide the detail. I can see the chair of finance say, no, no, no. We were informed that we were going to procure 1.5 million meters. And if you look at the agreement that was brought to us by the IDA, and uh, pages 9, pages 9, talks about component 1, distribution utilities, commercial loss reduction investment, IDA, 90 million, honorable. A, the procurement and installation of smart prepay bed meters, along with associated software, $62.5 million. ECG, and $10 million to NETCO, Northern Electrification Development Company. The enhancement of meter management system, existing systems deployed under MCC financing, $5 million. Page 10 talks about C, strengthening commercial information system, CIS, 10 million United States dollars. And D, other associated ICT systems for improving op operational efficiency of ECG, $2.5 million. That, that sums up 
the 90 million dollars. Thank you. The details have now been given. Can now proceed to put the question. Honorable members, those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against say no. no. I have to put the question again. Those in favor. Those in favor of the motion. Honorable members, I put the question again. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against say no. no. Well, definitely the no's have it. From the voice vote, the no's have it. Yes, Chairman. Mr. Speaker, I think we must put the question again. Please, honorable members, let's hear each other. Yes. Speaker, I didn't. I, I, I don't think the nose have it. I think the question. Uh, you are challenging my the voice, the decision on the voice vote. You are entitled to. You can do so. So, what do we do? Do we do head count or division? You want head count? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't think the chairman actually is um, challenging your opinion on the voice vote. But he actually said that at the time the question was put, many didn't understand what was going on. That is why, Mr. Speaker, that is why even those, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, even those who voted no, the ranking member on the finance committee spoke in support of the motion. So, Mr. Speaker, they didn't quite understand it, but not to challenge your opinion on the voice vote. So, Mr. Speaker, with, Mr. Speaker, with your leave, if the question can be put again, it will settle the matter. Honorable members, since last week, I indicated to this House that I will be adjourning the House today, and I actually gave at 4 p.m. For good reason, even at today's conclave meeting, I stressed the 4 p.m. My leadership pleaded, and I extended it to 5. Now. Is 5.44. I thought there was some agreement on some issues we could take. It looks like something has happened. And clearly, I have always drawn the attention of the leader of government business who himself is now not even available. 
he's not on the floor. Because you always need numbers behind you when you are taking some stands on issues on the floor. Those numbers are not there. And those who support you to do your business, you will run at them. And so when they react, then the results will not be in your favor. Clearly, this is what has happened. And there's no way the speaker can preside and be pretending to be doing the right thing when everybody will see it's so visible that it is wrong for the speaker. So I will do what is right. And truly, the nose had it. And the motion is accordingly rejected. Speaker, yes, Chairman. Um, Mr. Speaker, I'm challenging the decision and I'm requesting for a division. division on this matter. Division? Well, just read the standing orders on division. The best in the circumstances is for us to adjourn the house sine die. And that is what I proceed to do.